high school. Four years of your life that feel like forever when you're in the thick of it. The big game, the prom, cutting up with your friends in biology class, and then getting cut up by your biology teacher with a scalpel. Welcome to Hell High. A group of high school outcasts target their uptight biology teacher, Miss Storm, for a night of torment she won't soon forget. Unfortunately for them, Miss Storm is a little unhinged, and when she breaks bad, it'll turn out to be a night that those who survive will live to regret. I had completely forgotten about Hell High prior to learning that Arrow Video was releasing the film on Blu-ray. I first saw Hell High on VHS many, many years ago. I liked it so much that I rented it a few times, as a matter of fact. But time and old age had pretty much wiped it from my memory. Hell High is a unique movie. It's a slasher reversal revenge movie with elements of Heathers and a dash of River's Edge. The movie begins with a cute little girl in a bright pink dress playing with her dolls inside of a rotting outhouse somewhere in a swamp. The music, the look of the movie, and the little girl's overacting creates this dreamlike aesthetic that runs throughout the entirety of the film. This is Miss Storm as a little girl, and young Miss Storm did something very, very naughty on that day in the swamp. Something that still haunts her 18 years later. One day in biology class, Miss Storm slaps a troublemaker named Dickens. He's a Dickens, all right. Of course, that kind of reaction to a recalcitrant youth today by an educator would most certainly cost them their job and likely their freedom, and cost the school district millions in lawsuits. Funny story. Back in high school, I had this teacher who was a bit uptight. And when I say uptight, I mean it. She didn't have a stick up her butt. She had a two by four. She was humorless, all business, and no guff was accepted. But I had worn her down during my senior year with my charming personality and incredible sense of humor. She'd taken a liking to me. Or so I thought. One day toward the end of the year, I had an idea. The idea was for a buddy of mine to snap a photo of me with my arm around her. So one day during class, in the middle of class, I walked around her desk to where she was standing and engaged. The photo my buddy took, and I wish I still had it today, captured us at the very moment that her elbow made contact with my stomach. I was stunned for a moment, as was the entire class. I made an inappropriate remark which broke the silence, but I could tell that she was embarrassed. I was embarrassed too. She asked me to stay after class, where she told me, Justin, you're funny, but not that funny. Maybe that's why I liked this movie so much back in the day. Maybe Miss Storm reminded me a little of that teacher who shall remain nameless. Only the troublemakers here take it way too far after donning scary masks and pelting her house with slime, and Miss Storm definitely doesn't strike back with elbows to the gut. Dickens, played by Christopher Stryker, is the leader of the outcasts. He's nihilistic, sociopathic, and out for a good time. It's just his idea of a good time includes breaking and entering, sexual battery, and manslaughter. Dickens delivers my favorite line in the film when he remarks, There's nothing after high school, only more stink. The newest member of his crew is John John, the former star quarterback, who's recently quit the team for reasons that the movie doesn't go into, although you get the sense that John John either couldn't handle the pressure or that there's a void in him that being a star quarterback just couldn't fill. John John wants a little walk on the wild side, and Dickens is more than happy to be his guide. Rounding out Dickens' crew is your typical heavyset crony, aptly named Smiler and Queenie, a naive young woman and the only one of the gang who has any semblance of a conscience. Of course, that conscience doesn't rear its ugly head until she's looking at doing hard time. Co-writer and director Douglas Grossman provides the outcast with a little more depth than you'd probably expect. The ennui and naivete of being a teen in the burbs, the immediacy of now and how distant the future feels until that future is threatened comes across in all four characters. Maureen Mooney plays Miss Storm. In the beginning, she's this fragile little thing haunted by the demons of her past. But when she snaps, she's vicious. And it's not like the typical revenge movie thing because she's not there anymore. Her mind just goes. The demons that haunted her have now taken hold, and they're out for blood. I also quite like the bleak pay-it-forward ending. 
Hell High benefits from a moody synth score, and the cold, overcast autumn setting adds to the overall atmosphere. Hell High is a well-made film that's got more going on than you'd expect. The performances all around are quite good, particularly that of the late Christopher Stryker as Dickens. I highly recommend it. I also highly recommend this new Blu-ray release from Arrow Video. The colors are vivid, and there's a high level of detail and clarity that makes most of Hell High look like a movie that was shot yesterday, and not over 30 years ago. There are moments where the picture quality noticeably degrades, as if those sequences were from a different source. I don't know, but those moments are few and far between. The audio quality here is rock solid. I'd give both the picture quality and the sound quality on this release a solid 4.5 out of 5. As far as extras are concerned, we get an optional intro from Joe Bob Briggs, but it contains spoilers, so you may want to watch the film first before checking out the intro with Joe Bob. First, we have Schools Out, an interview with director, co-writer, and producer Douglas Grossman. It's 42 minutes and 55 seconds in length. Mr. Grossman discusses growing up a film fan, having Frank Yablons, former head of Paramount, as a neighbor, working for Mr. Yab Yablons and the genesis of Hell High. He discusses raising money for the film, casting, storyboarding, the cinematography, and the score. He discusses production coming to a halt because they ran out of money, raising more money to finish the film, almost getting an X rating from the MPAA, and struggling to get the film distributed. He discusses how happy he is with the film today and its fandom and more. Next, we have A Beautiful Nightmare, an interview with cinematographer Stephen Fireberg. It's 28 minutes and 56 seconds in length. Mr. Fireberg discusses his humble beginnings in the business, meeting Douglas Grossman and getting hired to shoot Hell High. He discusses wanting the film to look like a nightmare, using what he learned from working with Dean Cundy on Hell High. He discusses how much he loves the film today and how thrilled he is that the film is getting this new release and more. Next, we have John John's Journey, an interview with actor Christopher Cousins. It's 18 minutes and 49 seconds in length. Mr. Cousins discusses auditioning for and getting cast in Hell High. He discusses shooting in upstate New York in the fall and being terrorized by killer raccoons. He discusses his character, his character's arc, what he learned on the film, and more. Next, we have The More the Better, an interview with actress Maureen Mooney. It's 20 minutes and 6 seconds in length. Ms. Mooney discusses getting cast in Hell High, her character and her character's background, and how she related to the character. She discusses the long shooting days, getting pregnant while shooting was on hiatus, and working with Mr. Grossman. Ms. Mooney discusses how thrilled she is with the film's restoration, and more. Next, we have Music Is Not Sound, an interview with composers Rich McCarr and Christopher Hyams Hart. It's 26 minutes and 48 seconds in length. They discuss how they approached creating the music for Hell High, the different themes and moods that they composed, and much more. Next, we have Back to Schools, the locations of Hell High, a tour of the original Hell High shooting locations with author and filmmaker Michael Gingold. It's 13 minutes and 7 seconds in length. We get archival interviews with Douglas Grossman and co-writer Leo Evans, a deleted scene, alternate opening titles, trailer and TV spots, and we get three audio commentaries, one with Douglas Grossman and cinematographer Steven Fireberg, one with just Douglas Grossman, and one with Joe Bob Briggs. I listened to the entirety of the Joe Bob Briggs commentary, and of course it was highly informative and very entertaining. This is one hell of a release for Hell High from the fine folks over at... Aero video, both the picture quality and the sound quality were top notch, and we get a plethora of extras. If you're a fan of Hell High, then this release is a must own. If you've not seen Hell High, again, I highly recommend it. This release would be a great way for you to see it for the first time. If you've seen Hell High, please let me know your thoughts on the film down in the comments section below. If you've already picked up this release from Aero Video, please let me know your thoughts on it while you're down there. If you like this video, please leave it a thumbs up and share it on social media. If you're not following me on social media, those links are in the description. As always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Take care, and until next time, peace. Thank you to all my patrons and channel members. I appreciate your generosity and support of my channel. Become a patron today and have a say in what content appears on my channel. Join me for monthly live streams and much more. Become a channel member today and get access to exclusive badges and emotes to use when I stream. Both those links are in the description. Say hello to the internet, Jeremy. Hello to the internet.